Underlying Malthusian theory is the principle that the human population has a tendency to grow exponentially, which is a key component of the Malthusian growth model. However, resources, such as food, follow a linear pattern of growth. At some point, this discord causes living conditions to deteriorate until a decline in population occurs this concept, known as a Malthusian catastrophe, exemplifies when the increasing population surpasses the capacity of agriculture to support it. Consequently, wars or famines occur, escalating towards poverty and population reduction. This situation forces the population to adjust rapidly to more sustainable levels. These ideologies, instrumental in numerous social and political movements, are often associated with advocates of population control and originally stem from the theories propounded by Reverend Thomas Robert Malthus in his 1798 work, An Essay on the Principle of Population. Malthus advocated that technology could boost resource availability, thereby enhancing living standards, however. These improved conditions would spur population growth, eventually reverting resources per person to their original state. Today's economists are divided on Malthus's theory, with some arguing that the persistence of extreme poverty signifies that the Malthusian trap still operates on the other hand. Others claim that thanks to increased food scarcity and pollution, the trap predominantly affects developing nations. Moving into the modern era, overpopulation is seen as a similar challenge. Neo-Malthusianism, arising from Malthus's ideology, supports population planning to safeguard resources and the environment for present and unborn generations. While subscribing to Malthus's fundamental theory, Neo-Malthusians advocate for the use of birth control, in contrast to Malthus's preference for self-control. Because of his devout Christian beliefs, modern Neo-Malthusians focus more on environmental degradation and impending catastrophe related famines than poverty. Thomas Malthus, in his 1798 work, An Essay on the Principle of Population, put forth the theory that the prosperity of a nation is not determined by its wealth or poverty, its youth or age, or the density of its population. Rather, it depends on the speed at which its population grows and how closely the annual increase in food production matches the unrestricted growth of its population. His hypothesis presented the idea that while the growth in human populations is natural, it requires an equal growth in food production to maintain the happiness of the nation. However, Malthus argued this instinctual increase in population could result in natural cycles of plenty and scarcity. He depicted a scenario where the means of sustenance are just sufficient to comfortably support a country's inhabitants. But due to a continued push towards population growth, the same food supply that previously supported 7 million, for instance, would need to be split among 7.5 or 8 million. This situation would ultimately increase hardship for the poor, lead to a surplus of labor, decrease labor prices, and a subsequent rise in the cost of provisions. Consequently, the ordinary worker would need to work harder to maintain the same standard of living. Such periods of distress would discourage marriage and family, rearing, hence stalling population growth. Nevertheless, these circumstances would encourage cultivators to increase labor on their land, improve cultivation practices, and ultimately increase food production. This leads to a return to a balanced state where the means of subsistence matches the population, and the restraints on population growth are loosened lending to repeated cycles of advancements and regressions in happiness level. Malthus regarded famine as nature's most gruesome corrective measure for overpopulation. He believed that the human population has the potential to grow faster than the Earth's capacity to provide sustenance, causing premature death to act as a form of population control, which could assume various forms such as vices of mankind, epidemics, pestilence, and plague should these not sufficiently curtail the population growth. A severe famine would result causing a significant reduction in population. Throughout his life and beyond, Malthus faced strong opposition to his ideas most notable of his critics being Friedrich Engels, who vocalized his objections several decades later. Malthus's controversial theories, which identified rapid procreation by the working class as the major cause of their impoverishment, rather than capitalist exploitation, sparked considerable debate. He opposed charitable aid to the poverty, stricken a stance that aligned with Whig economic theories and fueled the Poor Law Amendment Act of 1834. Critics harshly defined the act as a Malthusian bill, purporting it was intended to coerce the poor into immigrating, settling for lower wages, or subsisting on inferior food, whilst instigating the creation of workhouses amidst violent protests. 
Subsequently, Malthus tempered his views in later editions of his pivotal work, an essay on the principles of population, fostering a note of optimism. However, the degree of his ideological shift remains disputed among historians, as Dan Ritchell of the Center for History Education at the University of Maryland reveals. Malthus's primary fear stemmed from the prospect of a population boom among the indigent, pillaging national coffers to support their growing numbers, and potentially bankrupting the nation. Modern interpretations of Malthusianism reflect the broader concern of general overpopulation. But the key thrust of Malthus's theory was apprehension over a surge of impoverished dependents. Critics from the 19th century like David Ricardo, who saw his writings as a veiled critique of wage theories, and Karl Marx, who dismissed Malthusianism as bourgeoisie chicanery that scapegoated the poor while perpetuating their exploitation, engaged in extensive debates with Malthus. Nonetheless, his theories found advocates in figures like Harriet Martineau, a contemporary novelist, and Charles Darwin, who drew inspiration from Malthus's ideas on competitive survival and natural selection. Malthusian and Darwinian theories mutually influenced each other, shaping the eugenics movement advocates like Henry Fairfield Osborne Jr. proposed humane birth control as a solution to forestalling a Malthusian catastrophe through trimming the population of those deemed the unfit. The contemporary interpretation of Malthusian theory, developed by Kwamrul Ashraf and Odette Galore, suggests that technological advancement can only temporarily increase per capita income as it ultimately prompts population growth that balances out the income increase. According to the theory, societies advanced in technology might have been characterized by denser population, but their per capita income level remained similar to technologically backward societies during the Malthusian phase. During the Malthusian phase, Malthus proposed two methods labeled as preventative and positive checks to cope with population growth in relation to food supply. Preventative checks aimed at controlling population growth by reducing fertility rates and included practices such as celibacy, chastity, and contraception. Malthus, on the other hand, regarded contraception as morally reprehensible along with infanticide, abortion, and adultery. Positive checks, conversely, incorporated factors that curtailed human lifespan, such as war, disease, and famine, but also impoverished health and economic conditions if these triggered high premature death rates. The ensuing crisis was recognized as a Malthusian catastrophe. The idea of a Malthusian catastrophe would arise when the population surpasses or equals the shared supply capacity, necessitating the imposition of positive checks to restore equilibrium. However, this is a simplified scenario, as the actual circumstances would be more intricate due to varying regional and individual access to food, water, and other resources. The Malthusian theory and the theme of population control in relation to resources recur frequently in societal discourse, notably in economics. Eminent economist John Maynard Keynes painted the European political economy as a model of Malthusian instability due to population pressure on food supplies furthermore. Many models of resource exhaustion and scarcity subscribe to a Malthusian outlook. In France, the term Malthusian politics applies to population management strategies. The Malthusian concept of population restriction later evolved into a concept of production restriction in later economic theory. In French context, a Malthusian economy is identified as one where protectionist policies and formation of cartels is not merely tolerated, but actively promoted. The urgent concern about the possible perils of population growth has been echoed by many within environmental movements. One particularly significant example came in 1968 when ecologist Garrett Hardin wrote his influential essay, The Tragedy of the Commons, which leaned heavily on Malthusian theory. Hardin highlighted that our finite world could only support a finite world could only support a finite population, warning that the freedom to breed would ultimately lead to disaster. Malthusian philosophy was further explored in 1972 with the publication of The Limits to Growth by the Club of Rome, the organization, and the report became pillars of the Neo-Malthusian revival. Key figures in the Neo-Malthusian movement include Paul R. Ehrlich Ehrlich and Hermann Dolly, authors of The Population Bomb and proponents of a steady-state economy, respectively. While the return to Malthusian thought was met with criticism, with some claiming that increased food production due to the Green Revolution negates concerns of overpopulation, others like Julian Simon propose the idea of Earth's carrying capacity being limitless. They argue that our understanding of limits is an economic one, not a physical one, despite these counterarguments. 
The concern over the impact of exponential population growth outpacing resources and human innovation remains among neo-Malthusian. Prominent voices like Al Bartlett accentuate this predicament, focusing on the shortcomings of managing energy supplies and the failure to grasp the impact of exponential growth. Critiques by neo-Malthusians like Paul Ehrlich still point out the excessive rate of Earth's population growth. Warning of an impending crisis, this worrying view was accentuated by food price spikes in 2007, 2007, 2008 reigniting the Malthusian discourse about global food supplies. Moreover, from 2004 to 2011, the issue of peak oil and resource depletion became a focal point in the United States, triggering a neo-Malthusian fringe group of peakists. A 2009 United Nations study stated that food production would need to surge by 70s within the next 40 years, with production in developing countries needing to double to cater to the projected population increase. Concurrently, the detrimental effects of global warming are predicted to undermine food production worldwide, escalating concerns about population growth and resource sustainability. Research has found that technological advancements and improved land productivity had a significant impact on population density between the time frame of 1. 1508. However, these factors scarcely affected the standard of living. Moreover, wages remained relatively stagnant across diverse regions over long periods. For example, in Babylonia, 1800-1600 BLU, Classical Athens, 328 BCE, and England, 1800 mid. Daily wages equated to nearly the same amount of wheat, regardless of technological advancements, real wages in Britain between 1200 and 1800 only experienced minor deviations. The Black Death and subsequent plagues necessitated a demographic restructuring in Europe. Historian Walter Scheidel highlights that these dreadful events reduced economic disparity by lessening wealth of landowners and raising the standards for workers. He argues that the improved living conditions for laborers originated from multi-generational suffering and premature deaths. This resultant social harmony was later overturned by demographic resurgence. A study by Robert Fogel revealed that from a century before Malthus till the 19th century, Europeans were chronically malnourished, leading to stunted growth and higher susceptibility to diseases. Only after 1750 did weight and height start to steadily rise in the UK and France. Presently, the Malthusian theory is observable in underdeveloped nations with exponential population growth. Experts believe that East Africa is still reeling from the detrimental effects of population increase. This concept is supported by Jared Diamond's book Collapse, 2005, where he attributes the Rwandan genocide in part to the intense population pressures he considers Rwanda as an example of the worst-case scenario predicted by Malthus. He explains the mass slaughters of Tutsi and some Hutu Rwandans were consequences of dense populations and insufficient technological progress that undermined food production. The Rwandan genocide thus exemplifies a potential Malthusian precipice. Following World War II, a surge in agricultural productivity took place due to mechanization and the Green Revolution, which led to a considerable expansion in the global food supply, thus reducing food prices. This resulted in a swift acceleration in the globe's population growth. This rapid increase was predicted by Paul R. E. Herlish, Simon Hopkins, and others to lead us towards an impending Malthusian catastrophe. However, the populations of the majority of developed countries grew moderately compared to the increases in efficiency and productivity. As we enter the 21st century, many technologically advanced countries underwent demographic transitions, including a decline in total fertility rates due to factors like decreased infant mortality, increased urbanization, and accessible birth control. The United Nations Population Fund now projects a peak in human population late in the 21st century, with the assumption that this demographic transition will extend from developed countries to less developed nations. Although most of the less developed countries are corroborated by empirical research, the majority of Sub-Saharan Africa remains an exception. The primary sustainability concerns, according to a 2004 study conducted by notable economists and ecologists such as Kenneth Arrow and Paul Ehrlich, have shifted from population growth to the consumption savings ratio due to changes in the rate of population growth since the 1970s of consumer. Behavior is shifted by policy changes. Studies suggest that the Malthusian catastrophe can be averted. Malthus predicted a doubling of population every 25 years. This was deemed incorrect, as while the population in the UE.
S stood at 17 million back in the 1850s and rose to 150 million a century later. Rise in processed foods brought about a decline in commercial food production and optimized efficiency technological advancements evolved to meet food demand. Malthus's population theory was disregarded by economists as it didn't account for socioeconomic influences on economic growth additional factors such as cultural shifts, which impacted the increase in food production, played a part in debunking Malthus's theory. The debate surrounding whether the growth of the human population contributes to poverty has been a heated one. Marx emphasized that the expansion of the human population and associated relative surplus within it directly relates to accumulation. Simultaneously, Henry George, in his work Progress and Poverty from 1879, disagreed attributing poverty to the ownership concentration of land and natural resources. George highlighted the unique human capacity to harness nature's reproductive forces for personal benefit, in contrast to other species. Meanwhile, D.E.C. Eversley critiqued Malthus for presumably being ignorant of industrialization's extent and dismissed or discredited the potential of industrialization ameliorating the living conditions of poorer sectors. Barry Commoner, in his 1971 publication, The Closing Circle, predicted that technological advancements will eventually dilute civilization's ecological damage and demographic growth. Moreover, he strongly opposed the coercive measures advocated by neo-Malthusian movements of his era, arguing these would disproportionately burden the struggling, low-income population. Esther Basarup introduced the idea that a burgeoning population provokes agricultural intensification, ushering in highly productive and less labor-intensive farming tactics. From her perspective, human population levels dictate agricultural methodologies, reversing the preconceived notion. Meanwhile, environmentalist and founder of eco-modernism, Stuart Brand, underlined the failure of Malthusian projections due to unpredicted fertility changes, which peaked globally at two growth per year in 1963 and has quickly decreased since. He indicated that past short-term trends couldn't necessarily predict a Malthusian catastrophe's likelihood over more extended periods, though such a catastrophe seemed imminent at the start of the 21st century, according to some, like Paul R. Ehrlich. Their predictions have been debated by others, including economist Julian L. Simon and medical statistician Hans Rosling. On a more critical note, Joseph Tainer postulated that science's diminishing marginal returns are becoming increasingly unmanageable, costly, and challenging to obtain. He suggested that this might impact the efficiency of factors credited with averting Malthusian scenarios in the past. Lastly, the concept that escaping the Malthusian trap has ushered in an era of sustained economic growth was explored by unified growth theory. Particularly, Oded Galor and Omer Moab argue that the Malthusian epoch's natural selection forces paved the way for the evolution of traits beneficial for growth, enabling human civilization's leap towards modern progression.